Welcome to a hands-on video about generic classes. TMS just announced a new beta release of their TMS Web Core framework. One of the big features that is going to be introduced with the next release are generic classes. And today I would like to show you a very hands-on practical example why generic classes are something, if you're not using them yet, you should use them right now. Because the criticism that I read or hear all the time is my customers are not going to see if I'm using generic classes or how I am writing my applications. So I'm focusing on other things. However, I'd like to show you the big advantage with regenerate classes, how your development process or how your software can become more robust if you use generic classes. I pulled up my good old friend, the book store order page locator or whatever you want to call it. You can basically select an Amazon store and then the book title of the books that I have written and then this application is going to guide you to the order page or to the overview of the book on Amazon. I explained this example in great detail in another hands-on video that is available on this very video stream. Today I'm going to convert the implementation so that it uses generic classes. Because if you remember, if you have seen the video, I pointed out that we have some deficiencies compared to an implementation that uses generics. That is exactly what I'm going to show you today where these deficiencies are. So going back to the implementation, we use two lists. One is for the list of stores and another list is for the list of books. If you go back to the browser, these are the two lists, one for the store and one for the books. And it's no magic there. We could use strings or an array of string, and that is actually what we used in order to define the data to make it simple. So this is still in place. We're not going to hook up a database or anything complicated like that. However, at the time we did use so-called entity classes to realize the to or to link the title of the book to its internal number at Amazon and also the store has not only a name but also a URL and these two classes tbook and tstore are being put on a t object list and that is exactly where the problems arise nobody guarantees that you only add tbook instances to this object list when you get books. And nobody guarantees that you only add stores to the store list because a T object list is, as the name says, a list of objects. And nobody will disagree with me on that. Both T book and T store are derived of T object. Instances of both classes can actually be added to either list. And that is where runtime errors occur. Because in your code, you will have to typecast at some point. Because if you look at the implementation, how we initialize the combo box, you can see right here that you add an object and you cast it to tstore. And this type cast might go wrong if there is no tstore object on the list. So at this point, you actually could write better code if you use generic classes, because at this point, the compiler does not have a chance to correct your mistake because the typecast can only be evaluated at runtime at this point. So there is no control mechanism in place other than at runtime when your users actually experience your application. And with generic classes, this can change. You can actually put a restriction on what kind of object instances are supposed to be added to a list and then the compiler can check if you try to add a different instance to a list and throw a compiler error at compile time. So your end users will never get in touch with that error. So I would say that clearly is a benefit for your application and your software development process. Just one side note, that is only one of the advantages of generic classes using lists like this. And the TMS Web Core Framework provides list structures and other data structures of all sorts that have been extended to have 
generic capabilities. The same will happen with, for example, the integration of X data, which currently does not support generic like it does in other frameworks, but in the future will also offer generic support. And then you will be able to use your X data service interfaces inside of your TMS web core applications, just like in any other framework. So that is another advantage of generic classes that other frameworks will be able to use them as well. This will make certain that you will be able to find more errors at compile time and not at runtime when your users experience your application. So let's actually change the application to use generics. For that, I'm going to start with the classes data and we have to replace the container class with the generics.collections class. That's the first. And let's see if we have anything in the implementation. No. Okay, so that's that. And we have still keep tbook and tstore. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a tstore list, which is a t object list. And here you see these HTML tag braces in order to indicate a generic type. So each instance that is to be put on this list has to be of type tstore. What makes generic so powerful is this can also be derived classes of tstore. So if you have a class tlocalstore of class tstore, then tlocalstore would be able to be put on that list as well. So all the polymorphic things that you're doing in object-oriented programming will still be possible using generics. tbook list, just the same t object list, tbook. And let's see what this means for our data controller. In order to return the books, we return a tbook list. And in order to return a store, we return a t store list. So these are the changes here. And of course, we have to do the same changes in the implementation t store list. And now, in order to use the dynamics, we no longer instantiate t object list, but t book list. And this is where it becomes interesting. So result is the t book list, and let's call result dot add. And here's the kicker: const a value t book. So you're no longer able to add any other class. Let's say t store dot create. Try to add a t store to this list, and if we compile this, we should get a compiler error exactly right here incompatible type got t store expected t book so it can't get better than that right because now you're really type safe with all your data structures so we remove that and we do the same for the get stores t store list create and we don't need to make any change here because l store that we add is of the correct type so right now if you compile it all works well um, not so fast. Of course, in our form class, we also have to create t store list. And now code completion can't handle that type. The reason for that is that classes data is defined in the implementation. You have to pull it up here, remove containers, and now also add generics collections and looking at this f books is t book list and you see we get code completion and now let's see what happens here t book t store if we initialize the comma box you see right here we increment the or we iterate the stores list and the books list and we have a typecast we now can do something else we can say store type t store and we can actually say L store equals F stores I dot and you see name URL because we don't need the typecast anymore. Okay, so that is um, L store dot name. And 
we can also add the instance to the items of the combo box. There is one downside here. Of course, the framework itself, the combo box, will still be typed with T object and not with the type of that you want to have in there. So there, at that point, you use your capability to um, locate wrong objects. But still, up to this point, it's pretty darn cool that you have that capability. So let's do the same for the book, L book, T book. And here you say L book equals F books, I no type cast. You yeah, also no type cast L book title and F books I becomes L book. So that's that. And here you see the default settings and that's that. Obviously, you still need to keep the typecast if you retrieve values from the combo box, as I just explained. However, this is pretty safe now because you made sure that only a T-book and a T-store can actually be added to the combo box. So you definitely gain some code security here. And uh, if we compile this, we shouldn't get any errors. It's all good. So we can run the application. And you see it's the exact same application. Let's go to Germany, um, TMS Web Core, the German version. Go to order page. And of course, with this resolution, there you go. Here you see the correct page. So our web project works just with the difference that we're now type safe on all our lists and to the instances that are being added to our visual controls. So that is just one quick reminder why it is always good to look into new things common in frameworks like generics, which give you type safety for your data structures without lots of work. Because let's be honest here, the only thing that I really did is I replaced T object list with T object list and then specifying the um, class that is actually supposed to be stored on that list. That's all I did. So thank you for listening and get ready for TMS Web Core 1.2.